If you were going to choose to go out to the Rocky Mountains to fly fish, I'd say most people would rather do it just about any time other than the winter. But unfortunately, Andrew and I don't get to choose when we go fishing. So when Andrew hit me up and said he needed some help moving, I jumped at the opportunity to tangle with some late winter trout in Colorado. I mean, come on. Who would turn down a chance to fish some of the best trout water in America? Winters in the Rockies can be brutal, and fishing can seem ridiculous at times. But if you're like us and you find yourself with a rod in your hand and four days on the water, you try to make the best of it. The weather, however, had different plans. On day one, we spent a while looking for areas we could fish without getting absolutely destroyed by snow and wind. And eventually we gave up. When forced to choose between a windstorm and a blizzard, we chose the windstorm, but only because the blizzard was unbearable. Fly fishing in the wind is arguably one of the most difficult conditions to try to catch trout in, but after some time we stumbled onto one of the most insane brown trout spots I've ever fished. To this day, I'm not sure that I've seen so many 20 inch class fish in one spot. Huge brown, huge brown. Big and huge, huge. That one's even bigger. I'm stuck on my cell. Yep, yep, yep. This one knows he's hooked. I'll stand out here. Back up. <laughs> There's like a hundred big browns in here and they're just eating like it's nobody's business. That one's even bigger, that one's even bigger dude. Let's go. That's a male too. That's a 21. I want to get a measuring tape on it real quick. Where's the measuring tape at? I think it's bigger than that. Right. It just looks way bigger because it's Wait, heavier. It's a male, so it has a big broader and a little beaker, beakier. So it's like, like 2021. 20, yeah. But still, it would just it looks more impressive because it has the nice beak. All right, guys. So for whatever reason, we've come to this hole, and Andrew just caught a 20, and then 20, 20 and a half. This one's about the same size, but it's a male, so I thought it looked a little bigger than it was. And just before this, I literally lost like what an 18 to 20 probably. That's why 18 to 19. And I was really ticked off because Andrew didn't net it when the fish was rolling around the bank. But then he made up for it with this one, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know why all these big browns are stacked in here, but <laughs> I'm not going to question it. I'm going to hold up this fish real quick so that you guys can get a look at them. Maybe. You can't hold these fish. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Nice fish, man. Look at the head on that way. That's sweet. So, we'll go ahead and get this guy released and then give this another second and then maybe catch another one out of it. Big one. It is, but I could. It's still on it. No, it's not. Never mind. I lied. 
It's another big one. I don't have the net. Where's the net at? Where's the net at? Let's go, boy. <laughs> That's a yellow one, though. Well, the one I just had hit was not this fish, it was bigger. <laughs> so this that one. This one's yellow. All right, guys, Andrew just caught one here. I just caught this fish. I moved one prior to this. I think it was not this fish, so <laughs> might be more in here. But this is a very pretty one. I wonder if this is the one that I just lost because it was That's yellow. That's a good color on it. Look at that. What a fish, Beautiful man. Beautiful colors on that guy. That's an incredible fish. Huge, huge. That might have been the first one I lost, honestly. I think that's, that might be a 22. Woo! In the middle of a windstorm, baby! <laughs> I can't even believe this is happening. That one didn't even work. I just cast up there really high, and then I let it sink, and I set, pulled up, and it was heavy, so I set. I thought I was stuck at first. Nice, beautiful, male, Colorado male brown trout, man. Don't get any better than that. Twenty-four. It's just, I can't, this is just brutal, man. I think most of the fish were pulled like right here, like in this signal section. Yeah. Oh, this thing's way undercut in here. Like, I mean, it's undercut to where I'm standing. Big one. Oh, big one. I saw him come out and eat it. Just get, just, just calm in, come in. I can, I can stop that. Hold on, hold on. Next time. Ready? That's a pretty one, man. He came right out of this stick pile up here. I was working it, I was like, is there something following that? And I juked it twice and it came up and just, I saw its mouth open, I set into it. Oh. That's sweet. Uh, yeah, I did that same thing. I, I, I juked it towards the, the thing and then just came on and ate it. Was it over here, this one? Right there. Makes sense, I guess. I'm, I'm just about that catch and I just jigged it towards this thing and I just kind of was digging it along. And it might have known. Just did that and I was like right in there and it just came out. Right there. Dang. Oh, big, huge! You might still eat it. I'm losing dexterity, I'm losing dexterity. Is he going underneath this? How did he do that? 
Dude, they're so stacked in here, it's insane. <laughs> I don't know if that's even the fish that came out the first time. Dude, that thing came out swarthed it. I just set the hook and just pulled as hard as I could. I was like, if I don't pull him out of there immediately. Is it? That was a big one, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, 20 again. That stuck on me, on my back. Yeah, that'll do her. That was that other one, yeah. I thought you had him. No way, dude. Watch it. Pull it down right here. I got the net. Is that the same fish that you just hooked? Should we measure that one just for the fun of it? Nineteen. Probably add another a little bit. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay, so it's almost a twenty. All right, guys. Well, I can't really get in the water here because it's like five feet deep. But I'll just kind of quickly. Oh shoot! I, I literally don't think you can sit down. You might slide in. Yeah, I really am about to go in. So, <laughs> gonna quickly hold this fish up and then we're gonna get him back in the water. Beautiful brown like 19 inch uh male brown trout here yep what <laughs> i hate when they hold on to the net dude what a pretty fish man what a pretty fish that's so awesome oh yeah beautiful male brown look at him sweet i want to get this guy released and Maybe now I'll try to get it here. What is this fish, like 10 or more? I don't know. Around 20 inches? Just in case they're actually different fish. Come on, dude. Yeah, just in case they're actually different fish the whole time. You recording? Yeah. He's actually right in there. We can just play. It's so cool to just see them because they just kind of materialize. I think that's the funnest part is just how fast, how fast they like come out of nowhere. Let me see if I can hit that. Big one. Giant. Huge, 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 Andrew. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that. He's, he's tangled on himself. Let's go, dude! There's a bigger one. Woo! That's probably 22. Woo! Dude, I saw him slowly come out and eat that, and I set the hook knowing how big that fish was. Let's go! <laughs> dude, every undercut, dude, every undercut. That's 24. It's just longer. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just caught the biggest fish of the day 22 and a half inches. It's a rough measurement, but it's in that range. It's a really big brown trout. The biggest brown trout I've caught since like probably the, before the spawn in the fall. It's not the prettiest fish on earth, but um, it's like the, I don't know, like every single place on this undercut, I literally just said this, and I know I sound like a broken record, but every single spot in this undercut, just giant browns just come out and eat the streamer every time. Like I, Andrew and I were both sitting there like, dude, there's gonna be one underneath this undercut in this little back pocket, threw it in there. 
fish comes in. So I'm gonna hold this fish up real quick for everybody. That wasn't the last fish of the day, but it was the last one that we got good footage of. One thing worth mentioning when you're out trying to make the best of a winter's day is to look for the best weather to fish. If you go to your planned location and it's a blizzard, try a different area. Weather in the mountains is unpredictable and sometimes a 30 minute drive can be the difference between you catching fish and you digging your car out of a snowbank. In this case, we turned a seemingly miserable day into a moment of pure bliss. Due to some prior obligations, we couldn't spend every second of every day fishing which is why on day two, we didn't get started until after lunch. Without much of a plan, we found a small tributary on Google Maps, did some quick research on it, and ran to the creek to see what we could find. So, here's our brilliant plan for the day, and that is, we're gonna go fishing. We had a bunch of stuff to do this morning, so we didn't really get much accomplished this morning, uh, at least not fishing-wise, and it's about noon, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go head to the water and maybe fish a small creek. Um, depends on what the water looks like, and then if the fishing is good, we might fish more of the small creek. If it's crap, then we might go down the main river and see what we can do on the main river. But we don't have a ton of time today, or at least not compared to what we did yesterday. So uh, yeah, stay tuned, let's see what happens. I see it. Yep. I saw it as I cast it too. Yeah, it was it to to it. It was a wasn't a very big one. Surprised he didn't chase it. I thought he's gonna. When I first saw him move, I thought he's chasing to it. Well, I, the problem is you got to his left hand. Yeah, but shouldn't matter that much. Uh, Are you serious? I don't know. That wasn't a bad sign. I mean, it wasn't a huge boat, though. It was a big one. Got him. No! That's a big one. I just shoot one. Shh, 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 shh. Hey, dude. I don't know. It, it, it ate it, too. I don't know how to even hold it. He's still chasing it. Dude, or something's chasing it. Dude, that first thing that thing's still on it. Hey, dude. I mean, I saw him roll on it. I set the hook on the roll. I didn't well, feel that it. Well, fish was at least 16. Right. That's It's probably still sitting there. Still sitting there, but you hooked him there. It's like you pulled him a little bit. I know. I should have hooked him. I'm not sure how I didn't. I was, I was, uh, so the problem was I set the hook on the roll. Does that make sense? Like, I saw him roll on it, so I set the hook. But I was afraid. I didn't actually know if he'd eaten it, and I was afraid if I really sat, I didn't know if it might in a I tree or something. There's two fish, two nice fish in this hole. Well, the one was big. The other one was not that big. The one was in the middle. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, he came back for it. Why did he not eat that? Maybe he changed the mess or something. He's taking it, he's taking it. Got it. Let's go, it's, it's dude. A cut, cut. It's a cut. It's a cut bow. <laughs> it's a male cut bow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. That's a beautiful fish. Oh, I'm shaking, dude. That's why we fish these little creeks, dude. No way. Out of this little hole, man. That is so sick, dude. I'm so happy, man. I thought I messed up my chance. All right, guys. So we just stopped here at this little creek just for the fun of it to see if we could catch fish in this one hole because we knew this hole was here. And I catch this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think he's a... Is he a cut bow or just a rainbow? I think he's just a colored up male rainbow. I think he's just a colored up male rainbow. He probably came up here to spawn. And chill out. Rainbows are never nice to me. Look at that one. Greater than that. Well, uh, I guess that sometimes that happens when you're taking proper care of fish. Uh, especially rainbows for some reason. They really do not like to be held. So. Quick release on that guy, uh, but we're gonna keep fishing up this creek for a little bit longer and see if we can't catch another fish or two because if there's one rainbow that came up here to spawn, then there's probably multiple. So any one of these good pockets like this could hold a nice fish. So we're gonna keep trying, see what happens. Big one? What? Is that a nice fish? Yeah, it's like a 15-15 inch rainbow again. 
I'm trying to record with this. Here, you want yeah. the mat? Yeah, I'll get the mat. Brown. Is it a big brown? Dude, that's a nice brown, man. All right, guys, this is just after John caught that like 17, 18 inch uh, rainbow here, and this is like the next hole up. Nice brown. This is probably a 14, 14 inch brown, 15 inches, and but the colors on this thing are beautiful. I'm just gonna hold them up here. Look at that. Woo, we <laughs> flashbacks to John. Yeah, we love dropping right <laughs> trout in the water and not getting any shots of them, don't we? Oh, Go ahead. Oh my gosh, my pans. I know, dude, it's so Look at that. What a gorgeous fish, man. Awesome. We're gonna get this guy back in, fish up some more of this creek, because obviously it's producing pretty well. We saw this caught like a 18 inch rainbow. This is probably a 15 inch brown, so. This is just tiny little water. I mean, look at it. Not very big at all. Oh. That's a good one. <laughs> I saw him eat, I saw him swirl on it right in front of I the rock. I knew there had to be a fish right there. <laughs> right in front of the rock, man. Sweet! All right guys, so a little teaching point here. Um, this right here is a red from a rainbow trout. But anytime you see these light colored dirt, like gravel here, that's where the fish um, basically use their tail and knock the dirt and uh, sediment off the gravel so they can spawn and lay their eggs. So there's one right here. There's one sitting right there. And obviously they're finished spawning and there's no fish here, but it's just something to keep your eye on because you also, you still don't want to step on these reds because the eggs are on the reds. So anyway, I'm gonna keep fishing, see if we can't catch some fish, but just wanted to point that out. All right guys, so uh, basically we fished a couple more stretches of the little creek and didn't see much of anything. So we have returned to the main river to see if we can't catch a few browns or rainbows or whatever the heck wants to bite, honestly. We're not too picky, but anyway. Back at the main river, see what we can do. God bless, dude. It actually drives me insane. Got a big boy, brown boys. Dude, I got, that's a good one. Dude. That's good. Right in that slack pocket there. It's a nice fish. Now it's a brown. I just had one follow. It wasn't that big, though. <laughs> and he's like, screw that, dude. Okay, we got him a little closer. I'm going to back up. And I'm going to lift his head. Wow, what a fish, man. What a fish. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. We should have been here, though. Of course, I wasn't recording on that one. All right, guys. So... Let's show off this brown real quick. He's a beautiful fish. Look how pretty this fish is. Come on, buddy. Let's be friends here. Look how pretty that fish is. My gosh, man. That's an incredible little fish. He's not huge, but just look at that thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this fish released and we're gonna keep fishing because I fished two holes and I think I've moved three fish and lost one and then caught this one. So maybe there's a chance we catch a really big one. So let's keep going. John. John. Got one, guys. John. Oh, it's giant, but it's not a bad one.
Yeah, he just came up and walloped it. It's not, it's not giant, but it's not a bad. I literally just saw a brown this size. That's a pretty one there. Oh, that's, that's my fish, man. Yeah. I was just casting on this far uh, bank over here and this guy just came up and slammed my stream over here. It's a beautiful brown. Oh my gosh, this water's cold. <laughs> just gonna quickly hold him up. If he wants me to. A little too small for two hands, a little too big for one. So yeah, I don't know that's what true. To do. I'm just gonna try like a one. I'm just one. gonna kind of help it support the tail. Yeah. Look at that one, guys. <laughs> oh, he swam back into the net. That's All right, hilarious. let's try this again. Whoa! Oh <laughs> Feisty little fella, okay, man. Okay, we're just gonna we go might just do a release. Yeah, go. You can just time. hold him up and release him. Because this guy wants to go go bad. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful brand. fish, man. That's sweet. Woo! You ready? For a half day of fishing, I don't think that was half bad. When you're fishing in the winter, sometimes it's worth looking for tailwaters and small creeks that aren't completely frozen over. Tailwaters work well because their flows and water temperatures are regulated by dams, which provide a much more stable environment for trout in both the winter and the summer while small streams virtually guarantee that you're putting your flies in front of fish. Plus, in a lot of small streams, the fish don't have a ton of stuff to eat to begin with, so offering up a juicy stone fly or a jig streamer may just be too much for them to resist. Luckily, on day three, we had another full day, so we were able to go on a little bit of an adventure. One thing that I've always tended to do when the weather is cold is to head south. And whether that's me going down to North Carolina or Georgia when I'm out east, or in this case, heading down further south in Colorado, I can almost always find warmer weather. In this case, I found the desert. So today, we have something super unique that I have planned. And we're already here, I'm down in this deep canyon, and the plan is to catch some trout in probably one of the more unique places that I've ever trout fished in my life, and that is, we're pretty much in the desert. I mean, there's cactus all around, um, and it's probably some, and Andrew just caught a fish. <laughs> that's awesome. And it's probably some of the most unique fishing I've ever got to see. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's super cool. And let's see what we can do. It's a, it's a dark rainbow. Huh. Chill out. Look at that fish. The colors on that thing are incredible. Thanks, buddy. Okay, right, so I switched to a Euro rig because the fish are, we can see fish sitting down deep in this hole and we haven't really seen any dry fly eats. So I figured this will probably catch them. I'm pretty sure it'll catch them. Oh my gosh, that was a dry fly eat. You want to go in there? Oh, good brown. Uh, no, maybe not. It's a rainbow. I'm going to net this one though, because it's the biggest one for sure. Ready? Let's go, boys. It's a nice one. Jeez, man, that's a real nice fish. Yeah, I see on the far right side. This is this the only reason this rig. I'll try getting up there. I can't see it, but that's in the zone. Got him. It's a rainbow. It's a big rainbow, dude. Let's go, dude. That's a big fish, man. There's like four or five at the same size as this one. They're all this size. That is sick. All right, guys. Here's the rainbow that I just caught. 
we sight fish for this fish. It has a pretty cool little sight fishing deal there. I don't know why he's acting like he is, but he's a rainbow trout, what do you expect? Look at that fish, that's an incredible, incredible, incredible fish. Desert trout, baby, let's go. We'll get this guy released and then Andrew is gonna cast up in that hole and hopefully catch a good one. Nice one, dude, nice one. Dry fly eater. Look at that. That's awesome, man. This guy. Beautiful fish. Sweet. All right, so, I mean, this is, creek is unbelievable. I mean, we look, we walk up the holes and we can see probably 50 trout, 50 plus trout sitting in these holes. And everything I've caught is rainbow so far, but we have seen a few browns, so we know there's browns in here. But anyway. This is just like such an incredible little creek to come up here and have the privilege of fishing today. And look at this canyon. I mean, we're in the desert, there's cactus all around us. It's just, it's incredible just because I've never really fished anything quite like this before in my life. So it's one of the more unique areas I've ever trout fished. Biggin, brown. Brown. No, it's a rainbow. I need the net. Yeah. All right, guys, here's my rainbow that I just caught. I thought he was a brown because he's the fish are colored up right now. Look at that. Beautiful fish out of a beautiful hole. Thanks, buddy. See ya. That's some clear water right there. He's gonna go back to his hole. It's a brown. Is it? Yeah, it is a brown. Guess we could if you net him, we will. Might as well, that's the biggest brown of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest brown of the day. He's not a mega, but look at that. That's sweet, man. Hate the nymph. Get an underwater release of this fella. Continue on. There's something weird about walking through a desert and, while well, avoiding cactus so you don't ruin your waders, watching schools of 30 trout or more in every hole. It's hard to convey how many trout were truly in this creek without making a 45 minute video with every fish catch in it but this creek was absolutely loaded with fish and cactus. Exactly perfect. Yep, called it. <laughs> this one's close to it. Rainbow for the win. Not a bad one, Rainbow. There we go. Dude, they're just stacked in there. Actually, I want to get. I want. Let's get the. I don't know. I want to see if it's a brown. If it's a brown. I want. To oh, it's a rainbow. 
Oh, it's a nice looking rainbow there. Pretty good. Get the big camera. Got one. Big one, big one. Double trouble, baby. Here's another one, boys. It's a rainbow. Cute little guy. Not a giant. Fun nonetheless. Chill out. Look at that fella. Oh yeah. Thanks, buddy. Got another one. Ooh, that's a slightly larger fish. <laughs> Same pocket, man. Same pocket. That's just, this is kind of fun. I mean, this is crazy. Be gone. It's honestly crazy. Got like that many fish live in there. I mean, I could see, I could see multiple fish on the bottom right in there. Multiple. There we go. <laughs> I mean, I could just pull hundreds and hundreds of fish out of here, probably. I don't know how many fish we even caught today. I should have really kept a track of them. Because we're easily, we're probably close to 100 at this point. Like, seriously. There were lots of dry fly eats when I first came up to this hole. Oh, nice one, nice one, nice one, real nice one. Big fish. I have no confidence in what's going on right now. Like, why is it fighting like that? It's single, single, single. That's the biggest hand box are. Yeah, dude, that was way deep in there. It's like, woo, let's go. Like, there's plenty of fly lines in it now. I don't know how that even happens. All right, guys, so biggest fish of the day. We're coming towards the end of the day. This hole is just unreal. I've probably caught like at least 10 fish out of here, maybe more. I don't know. I sure as, I've definitely lost more. And finally here, we caught a really, really nice rainbow. And I'm going to try to hold them up for you guys. And hopefully this fish is nice to me, but I have no guarantees. I hope you guys enjoyed this desert trout oasis mission. Um, we caught like too many fish to count, honestly. I think the biggest was maybe like, what, 15 inches or so, that big rainbow in that one hole. But um, we've got a long hike out of here. So even though it's coming up on uh, five o'clock, we still got a few hours that we could fish. We're probably gonna hike out just because we've caught a, about a billion fish today and we have a really, really long hike out of here. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and catch you guys uh, tomorrow, I guess. That was easily one of my favorite days of trout fishing. 
not only because of the number of fish, but also because of the beauty of the environment we are catching them in. I've realized that finding fish in unique places has become almost as important to me as the fish themselves, and this particular day was a perfect example of why. On day four, we met up with a few buddies of mine to fish a river Andrew and I had been at a few times previously. We weren't exactly sure what to expect, but we ended up catching some of the biggest fish of the trip. All right guys, welcome back to the last and final day, for me at least in Colorado. Of course, Andrew's moved here now, so the Western content will not end. But this is the last video kind of in this little series that I'm making. And we're here on a bigger river again today, and we're looking for some really big rainbow trout. I don't know if we'll catch any, but we've got all day. We're just gonna relax and hopefully catch some really nice fish. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Brown or rainbow? Rainbow. Well, it's not giant, I guess. It's still big. <laughs> it's not doing much yet. So this particular day started off slow as often happens in the early season. We fished for several hours without any bites at all, and what few fish did bite we either quickly lost or never hooked to begin with. Andrew finally hooked this fish, which left him stranded out on a rock making landing the fish difficult. Unfortunately, this fish was not a good omen, because for the next hour or so we went fishless yet again, until finally we started catching fish like crazy. Now whether or not this was just a timing thing, a location thing, or if we just finally found what they were biting, I may never know. But you can't question why the fishing gets good sometimes. You just have to roll with it. Got a big one, big one, big one. I don't know, dude. Seems like something's wrong. Oh God. I think it's just wrapped. It's another one, boy. They were slaying now, son. What did he eat? Uh, th this one ate a little jig streamer, Olive. The last one ate a little nymph that was a tag above the jig streamer. Alright right, guys, so finally there's a cord on this one, hooked another one. This is another just big old rainbow. This one's a female, I believe. She'll hold stand still for a second. Look at that fish. That's a long one. Long, skinny, beautiful fish. So. I guess I'll hold her up. She's got me. <laughs> nice little female, nice little female boat, man. Pretty fish, didn't get much better than that, so. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get this girl released and maybe I'll catch another one out of here because apparently this is just the money spot to be. <laughs> I know I'm trying, I gotta get it. It's hard for me to.
Got one. Ooh! It's wrapped. It's wrapped up real bad. It's wrapped up real bad. It might have unwrapped itself. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Let's go, dude. <laughs> this is big rainbow trout number three. This was a little bit smaller, maybe, but just the fat, like such a, this fish are impossible. She's just so hefty. Look how hefty that fish is. Is that not incredible little fat fish? Yeah. I think it's much better than that. That's where I just, I caught two. Go, go for it, man. Uh, so I'm gonna release this fish and then maybe Andrew catch one, we'll see. No, nah. it's a little guy. It's just a, it's a smaller one. Pretty little rainbow. He's a little top in them. Little guy. There's gotta be a bigger one in here. So John just caught two big ones. There we go. That's a better one. Wow. Well, I don't know what Man, those guys were doing. Or what? Well, what were those other guys doing that were just here? Or they're just reset already. It's not quite as big as the ones you've been catching. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not as big as the one you were catching. Probably about the size of the one I just caught. Can't see where I'm walking. This one ate the upper nymph as well. This one ate the upper nymph. Um, I just missed one too. They're like, uh, I'm casting a bit higher up in the current. Oh, this guy's jumping. That's a pretty one though. Yeah, here.
Ready? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there we go. They're so pretty, too. All right, guys, I just caught this decent rainbow. This is my, like, second or third one in this pocket after John's caught that, caught those two uh, bigger, bigger ones. This is a beautiful rainbow here. Just a slab of a rainbow. Look at the colors on that thing. That's incredible. Sweet, man. All right, we're going to get this guy released. John will probably catch a few more times, and then, oh, he's, he's got one, too. Was that in that pocket you're talking about? That's cool. Where's the fish at? Oh, dude, that's a nice fish. Here, I'll keep the. You want the fly in his mouth? It's right in the beak. That's cool. It's pretty perfect. A little two bit hooker. Ready? Yep, go ahead. Oh, he's caught on my net. The one nymph that you. It's a beautiful fish, man. Thank you. Fish are biting now, Andrew. How do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah I think they're uh, turning on to the nymphs instead of just those streamers. Yep. The bugs are. <laughs> Goodbye, friend. In the afternoon, we all decided to switch to a different section of the river just to get a change in scenery. Also, to be honest, the fishing had slowed down tremendously, and we all wanted to get on a decent brown trout. Got him. Andrew! Oh, buddy. Undercut banks for the win, boys. It's a really nice brown trout. Oh my gosh, dude, that's so sick. I'm gonna bring him down here. That's so sweet, man. So sweet. All right, guys. There's my brown that I just caught in this undercut. Beautiful fish, man. Look how pretty he is. He's probably 18, 19 inches. He doesn't have a big head, though, which tells me they probably get a lot bigger in this river. But, oh, come here. He's got a lot of energy. I ended this trip with one more good brown, and then we headed out. It's not 20, that's for sure. It's a nice fish, though. Interestingly enough, I caught my last brown of the trip and my first brown of the trip on the exact same fly. A small leech jig streamer we had gotten from a fly shop just outside of Colorado Springs. As with all trips, the ending was bittersweet. We had explored some new areas, caught some good fish, and enjoyed our time fishing in the Rocky Mountains. As for me, I headed back to West Virginia to get back to the regular grind of my day job. As for Andrew, he settled into Colorado and has been living there ever since. We don't get to spend nearly as much time on the water together as we did before his move out west, but that just makes every trip more memorable. I truly hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more long-form film-style videos, let me know. And as always, Thanks for watching.